Welcome to Crash Course Ancient Civilizations, where we will be talking all about the Polynesians. The ancient Polynesians were a group of people that were scattered among thousands of islands in the Pacific Ocean. Even though each island developed differently from the rest, the language and culture among them were very similar, and the Polynesians often traveled to other islands in canoes. Their diet was also relied mostly on seafood, and men would spend hours every day fishing at sea. These materials and food items were used to trade with other people as there was no currency for exchange. People paid each other directly with goods, meaning if I gave you these five dead fish for food, you would give me a canoe. Um, by our standards today, the Polynesians were crazy almost as crazy as the Mongols. They believe that everything had some sort of mysterious powers, and I don't blame them. These people were isolated, like borderline solitary confinement. They didn't know any better. This isolation and being surrounded by water proved to be a challenge, and the solutions they came up with really shaped their civilization. Somehow, the Polynesians were able to have success as a civilization and not many people really know how. It, it seems impossible to me with the conditions they had to endure and the lack of contact with other civilizations, but they got it done. Let's go to camera two. Hi, camera two. Since there's a lot of water around the Polynesians, as you can see by this great drawing, they, may, they mostly ate seafood, like these random fish in the ocean and other food that lived in the water. There was nothing in the ocean that the Polynesians didn't have a purpose for. For example, crustaceans were used for food, and their shells were used for tools and ornaments. And even seaweed and algae was considered a delicacy for their salty taste. Basically, everything in the ocean was used by the Polynesian in some ways. Since everyone was scattered among a bunch of tiny islands, the Polynesians had to figure out a way to travel between each island. This sparked the ideas of canoes which were pretty much just hollowed out logs that happened to float in the water. The different islands were then able to trade with one another across the ocean. The strength and wealth of each island was completely dependent on their geography. The Polynesians could only use the list on their island, so better islands equaled wealthier and more advanced people than some of the tiny islands that only had a couple of trees and nothing else. The, Poly the Polynesians were also isolated, as their islands were so far away from any land, and most people didn't even know where the islands were. Because of this, they couldn't interact with the powerful Europeans with this superior technology, which eventually led to their downfall when the Europeans decided to take over the islands many years later. Their geography also influenced some of their very weird beliefs. Let's go to the thought bubble. The Polynesians were animistic. Animism means that they believed that everything, including plants and animals and other people, had a supernatural power they called mana, which may or may not have to anything to do with the mana in video games. The people with the most mana were pretty much considered gods, for example, the chiefs. And since most people were not gods, they had to dress differently from the chiefs to show their power and preserve the chiefs' mana. Rules made to preserve the mana in other places were common in Polynesia because they were made to prevent tapu, various activities that are said to drain mana from other people or places. Usually if somebody commits tapu, there is a very harsh punishment, usually death. The other main part of Polynesian religion was their belief in spirits. They believed that spirits existed, both good and bad, and that they could possess people and that they were the ones in charge of all good and all bad things that happened to people. The spirits lived in a world near the humans and would frequently visit, usually on a daily basis. When the spirits would visit, people would do a daily ritual to please them and hopefully get them to help them out in wars, weather, and other daily problems. Thanks, Thought Bubble. So, away from all this talk about supernatural powers and beings, let's get back to how the Polynesians lived when they weren't talking to spirits. The Polynesians really knew how to make the most out of the few resources that they were able to find on their islands. For example, their main form of their main form of transportation, canoes, were made out of tree bark, coconut shells, and even vegetable fiber. These canoes enabled the Polynesian islands to trade with each other, and they exchanged goods such as tools, cloth, and a ton of fish and seafood. The Polynesians loved being at sea, 
Some men traveled many miles out to sea every day just to find a good spot for fishing. For example, the people of Easter Island were known to journey 300 miles just to find good fishing waters. A bit too dedicated to fishing, don't you think? Of course, since they had a way to find, like, of course, since they had to find a way back to their island. The Polynesians were extremely skilled at navigation. They were at home on their sea, and they knew how to travel from island to island. The Polynesians loved the ocean so much that they even decided to build their houses above the water. Literally. These huts were made out of a wooden frame with a thatched roof, and there were wooden beams underneath the house that kept it above water level. A boardwalk-like structure connected all the houses together, and it provided a way from the mainland of the island to the houses without having to swim to get to your house. Their amazing ability for architecture is also shown on the infamous Easter Island, where huge stone structure, structures and temples were built by the Polynesians, although no one really knows how. These stone statues show that the Polynesians had a sense about proportion for using colors, shapes, and textures, and that they were able to combine sophisticated engineering with creative artistic design. These stone statues are still standing today, and you can visit them if you want to see huge lumps of rocks with creepy faces indented on them. Okay, now it's time for the open letter. Now for the open letter. Dear Chiefs, just because you guys are on, the, on top of the social hierarchy doesn't make you guys the greatest people in the civilization. Do you think just because you make laws are huge or something? Yes, you also controlled land expansion, but I mean the fact that you were entitled to eat pork frequently is baloney. There aren't so many cheesy puns in there. I do have to give some credit to you guys, though. I mean, you were on top of the social hierarchy and had to be respected by everyone in the civilization. You also had the most mana, meaning people who believe you had the most supernatural abilities. If a commoner entered a place considered sacred, he'd be put to death because only the chief would have enough mana to get to those places. Another pretty cool thing about you guys is that if someone stepped on your shadow, they'd be put to death for trying to steal some of your mana, so I guess that's pretty cool. So anyways, you think we're treated fair enough? Well, you also have the job of sustaining control over the tribe. Overall, I think you did have an important part in the lives of Polynesians, yet you guys are also treated with just a little bit too much respect. I mean, come on, people can't even step on your shadow. Best wishes. Polynesians had a great run, and I guess you could say it's still going on. The people of Polynesia are still there, but their culture has changed a lot, making it hard to say they are the same civilization. European influence overcame the Polynesians' beliefs. The major religion became Christianity, and their ideas started to slowly diffuse into the Polynesian islands. Because the Polynesians really accomplished almost everything else by themselves, these new ideas to mix into their culture changed it greatly. Remains of ancient Polynesia can still be seen today, such as the creepy stone statues on Easter Island. If you want, you can go check them out yourself.